Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. This video is going to be a little bit different for something I've never done on my channel before and it is a project pen and it is with the Pentastic ladies. So I'll link the Facebook group and all the ladies that are doing this collab in the description box. And what it is, is it's an A to Z of beauty products. So you have a beauty product for each letter of the alphabet. It's a year long project. So you have 12 months to finish 26 products. That's the idea behind it. Last year, I spent a lot of time joining projects that sounded really great to me and a lot of time picking out products that I was never going to finish. And so I ended up with loads of projects and nothing finished. And I didn't want to repeat that this year. I wanted to focus on stuff, get stuff out of my collection rather than use stuff for the sake of using stuff. So. This year is going to be all about actually finishing things and moving it on out. For that reason, I don't want to do too many project pans, but I want to support the Pantastic Ladies because I think they're wonderful and they're my friends and I want to support my friends. But at the same time, I don't want to take on too much. So I picked this project because it sounded like a really interesting idea to me. And the reason that I prefaced everything by saying that I didn't want to pick too many projects is because actually I'm not doing this in the traditional way. I'm going to do a TBR, which if you don't know what that means, it means to be read. Um, it's a kind of, I don't know where it's come from, but I assume that it's come from somewhere like Goodreads, which is like you have your to be read list or something like that. So I have here, 26 books, one for every single letter of the alphabet, to be finished in the year 2018. I don't know how many of these I'm going to get done. Let's just put that out there now. And I'm not going to read them in order of the alphabet, because that would be weird. But I will update you, like, on my progress throughout the whole year. So I'm going to go through the books, which ones I've chosen. Obviously you'll be able to tell why I've chosen them, because it'll be the letter of the alphabet. And I'll read the blurb on the back, and we'll see how long the video is. So for A, I picked Alice by Christina Henry, and on the back it says, In a warren of crumbling buildings and desperate people called the Old City, there stands a hospital with cinder block walls which echo with the screams of poor souls inside. In the hospital there is a woman, her hair, once blonde, hangs in tangles down her back. She doesn't remember why she's in such a terrible place, just a tea party long ago and long ears and blood. Then one night, a fire at the hospital gives the woman a chance to escape, tumbling out of the hole that imprisoned her, leaving her free to uncover the truth about what happened to her all those years ago. Only something has escaped with her, something dark, something powerful. And to find the truth, she will have to track this beast to the very heart of the old city, where the rabbit waits for his Alice. So it's kind of like a play on the Alice in Wonderland thing, and I've said this before, Alice in Wonderland is my favourite book, so I wanted to give this a go, which is why I picked it up. For B, I picked Between Males by Fiona Walker, and this one says, Is revenge a dish best served cold? Odette is about to find out. For starters, she decides to leave her job and open a restaurant, but there are flies in her soup even before the main course. A bed-hopping sleeping partner and a gorgeous chef who's a few noodles short of a stir-fry definitely weren't on the menu. Forced out of her own kitchen, Odette cooks up one final dish of just desserts. But having escaped the frying pan, will she find love in the fire? So it's chiclet romance kind of thing. For C, I picked Lady Chatterley's Lover by D. H. Lawrence. And this says, Constant Chatterley feels trapped in her sexless marriage to the invalid Sir Clifford. Unable to fulfil his wife emotionally or physically, Clifford encourages her to have a liaison with a man of their own class. But Connie is attracted instead to Mellors, her husband's gamekeeper, with whom she embarks on a passionate affair that brings new life to her stifled existence. And you've probably heard of this book before. It is a classic. So, all of these books, by the way, I've never read before. So, for D, I picked Dara O'Brien. Tickling, tickling the English. The way to an Englishman's heart is through his funny bone. Irishman Dara O'Brien lives and works in England. When he's not in London, he's taking his show on tour up and down the country. Although he's been doing this for years, it's clear to him that his adopted home is a, still a bit of an enigma. 
it is high time he decides to discover what makes the English so well English. Why are they at the, why are they at their happiest when they're unhappy? Is this why England is such a great place to become a comedian? And what's with all the fudge, the gin, and the Robin Hood impersonators? On his latest tour, Dara attempts to pin down the English once and for all in this affectionate and insightful eye-opening journey through the sceptred isle. For E, I have Elizabeth is Missing by Emma Healy. Maud is forgetful. She makes a cup of tea and doesn't remember to drink it. She goes to the shops and forgets why she went. Sometimes her home is unrecognisable or her daughter Helen seems a total stranger. But there's one thing Maud is sure of. Her friend Elizabeth is missing. The note in her pocket tells her so. And no matter who tells her to stop going on about it, to leave it alone, to shut up, Maud will get to the bottom of it. Because somewhere in Maud's damaged mind lies the answer to an unsolved 70-year-old mystery. One everyone has forgotten about. Everyone except Maud. F, I picked Forbidden Fruit by Eden Bradley. While Mia Curry's university students cram into her class on sexuality, Mia has always kept her own private fantasies carefully under wraps until now. Jagger James is everything Mia wants and everything that is taboo. He's young, gorgeous, and a student, but how can Mia resist? So this is, for all intents and purposes, smut. It's going to be interesting reading this and then having to report back on it. For G, I picked a Gone Girl. This is by Gillian Flynn. There are two sides to every story. Who are you? What have we done to each other? These are the questions Nick Dunn finds himself asking on the morning of his fifth wedding anniversary when his wife Amy suddenly disappears. The police suspect Nick. Amy's friends reveal that she was afraid of him, that she kept secrets from him. He swears it isn't true. A police examination of his computer shows strange, ser strange searches. He says they weren't made by him, and then there are persistent calls on his mobile phone. So what did happen to Nick's beautiful wife? And I have seen the film of this, so and apparently the book is better than the film, so I have a lot of hype ready to read this book. So, so H then is Richard Castle uh, Heatwave. If you don't know, Richard Castle is a fictional character played by Nathan Fillion in the TV show Castle, which no longer exists, unfortunately. It's one of my favourite TV shows. And in that, the character Richard Castle actually writes books. He's an author. And the Heat series are based on his character Nikki Heat, which is a representation of his police crime partner that he works with in as his day job kind of thing. That was really, really long way of saying. This is a book that is penned by a fictional character created by the people who created the TV show. So this one is about a New York real estate tycoon plunges to his death on a Manhattan sidewalk. A trophy wife survives a brazen attack. Mobsters and moguls trot out their alibis. And then in the suffocating grip of a record heat wave comes another murder. Mystery sensation Richard Castle, blockbuster author of the Derek Storm novels, introduces his newest character, NYPD homicide detective Nikki Heat. Tough, sexy, professional Nikki Heat carries a passion for justice. When the commissioner assigns a superstar magazine journalist, Jameson Rook, to ride along with her to research an article on New York's finest, Rook turns out to be as much a handful as he is handsome. As Nikki works to unravel the secrets of the murdered tycoon, she must also confront the spark between them, the one called Heat. So that's, it's like a mystery crime thing. I, I picked Insurgent, which is the second in the Divergent series by Veronica Roth. And this one says, I have done bad things, I can't take them back, and they are a part of who I am. Tris has survived a brutal attack on her former home and family but she has paid a terrible price, wracked by grief and guilt. She becomes ever more reckless as she struggles to accept her new future. Yet if Triss wants to uncover the truth about her world, she must be stronger than ever, because more shocking choices and sacrifices lie ahead. And as you can see, I have actually started this one, but I didn't get very far. J, I picked Me Before You by Jojo Moyes. This is the book that the film me Before You was based on. Lou Clark knows lots of things. She knows how many footsteps there are between the bus stop and home. She knows she likes working in the buttered bun tea shop and she knows she might not love her boyfriend Patrick. But what Lou doesn't know is she's about to lose her job or that knowing what's coming is what keeps her sane. Walt Trainer knows his motorcycle accident took away his desire to live. 
He knows everything feels small and rather joyless now, and he knows exactly how he's going to put a stop to that. What Will doesn't know is that Lou is about to burst into his world in a riot of colour, and neither of them knows they're going to change the other for all time. For Kay, I picked The Kissing Gates. This is by Mackenzie Ford. When English soldier Hal strikes up a conversation with German Lieutenant Wilhelm during the ceasefire in No Man's Land on Christmas Day 1914, he has no idea the impact this chance meeting will have. Wilhelm is in love with an Englishwoman, Sam, and presses a, pho a photograph into Hal's hand. If he survives the war, Hal must promise to find Sam and give her this token of affection. Invalided home while the battle rages on, Hal goes in search of Sam, but the moment he sees her, he is in trouble. With Wilhelm's photograph hidden in his pocket, how begins a life and love affair meant for someone else? L, I picked Maya Banks' Letting Go. I can give you all that you want and need and so much more. Jocelyn had perfection once, and when her husband died, she was sure she'd never find it again. Yet now she cannot resist searching for the one thing her beloved husband couldn't give her, dominance and the chance to let go. Entering a hedonistic fantasy club, Joss never imagines that inside she will find the one man who's long been a source of comfort, her husband's best friend. Dash has been in love with Jocelyn for years, yet is unwilling to act on that attraction, even long after his best friend's death. But when Joss explains in detail what she needs, Dash knows he has to be the man to introduce her to that world, touch her, cherish her, love her, and that he'll be the only man that she will ever submit to. Again, quite smutty. For M... I picked The Time Traveller's Guide to Medieval England by Ian Mortimer. The past is a foreign country, they did things differently there. Imagine you could travel back in time to the 14th century. What would you see, eat, hear and smell? Where would you stay? And how are you going to test to see if you're going down with the plague? In The Time Traveller's Guide, Ian Mortimer's radical new approach turns our entire understanding of history upside down. History is not just something to be studied, it is also something to be lived. Whether that's the life of a peasant or a lord, the result is perhaps the most astonishing history book you're ever likely to read, as re revolutionary as it is informative, as entertaining as it is startling. And I have actually started this one as well, and I am a page turner downer, so I'm sorry if that offends anyone. But yeah, this is, I'm looking forward to finishing this one. For N, I picked It's Up To You, New York by Tess Daly. Living in a shoebox flat and working in telesales in a windowless building on an industrial estate was never quite what Holly, Holly Collins had in mind. So when Holly is picked from obscurity to take part in Street Scout, a television series on the hunt for fashion's next big model, life finally seems to be taking a turn for the better for the happy-go-lucky 20-something. Surely this is her big moment, but Holly knows only too well that dreams are just that. And when it feels like everything and everybody is conspiring against her, Holly heads for New York with her best friend Meg. The magic of Manhattan has Holly in its grasp. Strutting down Fifth Avenue and drinking too too many cosmopolitans, she can scarcely believe how far away the real world seems. But when Holly is faced with the biggest decision of her life, can she make the fairy tale become reality? For O, I picked Lee Child One Shot. Lee Child is actually one of my favourite authors. Six Shots, Five Dead. A heartland city thrown into terror. But within hours, the cops have it solved. A slam dunk case, apart from one thing. The accused gunman refuses to talk, except for a single phrase. Get Jack Reacher for me. Reacher lives off the grid. He's not looking for trouble. But sometimes trouble looks for him. What could connect the ex-military cop to the psychopathic killer? So for P, I picked Poison Study. This is by Maria Snyder. Choose. A quick death or slow poison. On the eve of her execution for murder, Yelena is reprieved, but her relief is short-lived. She is to be the commander of Ixia's food taster. Can Yelena learn all she needs to know about poisons before an assassin succeeds? Her troubles have only just begun, however. Valak, her captor, has, uniquely, has a uniquely cruel method to stop her escaping. General Brazel, father of the man she killed, wants her dead, and someone is plotting against the commander. Resourceful and wily, Yelena gains friends, survival skills, and more than a few enemies. In a desperate race against time, the commander's life, the future of Ixia, and the secrets of her own past will be in her hands. Q, I picked The Queen's Man from the winner of the CWA Ellis Peters Historical Fiction Award, Rory Clements. 1582. 
a young lawyer is plucked from his books and recruited to the secret service of Sir Francis Walsingham. John Shakespeare's first mission will take him to the heart of the Judas nest of conspirators that threatens to bring down the monarchy, those who had seen Queen Elizabeth deposed or worse, murdered, and the true Queen Mary on the throne in her place. He will soon learn that traitors come in many forms. If he is truly to serve the realm, he can have no other loyalty. Before friends, before lovers, before family, he must be the Queen's man. For R, I picked a Cathy Reich's book. This one is Bones to Ashes. Uh, under the microscope, the outer bone surface is a moonscape of craters. The skeleton is that of a young girl, no more than 14 years old. And forensic anthropologist Dr. Temperance Brennan is struggling to keep her emotions in check. A nagging in her subconscious won't let up, a memory triggered, deep in her hindbrain, the disappearance of a childhood friend, no warning, no explanation. Detective Andrew Ryan is working a series of parallel cases, three missing persons, three unidentified bodies, all female, all early to mid-teens. Could a Tempe's skeleton be yet another in this tragic line of young victims, or is she overreacting, making connections where none exist? Working on instinct, Tempe takes matters into her own hands but even she couldn't have predicted the horrors this investigation would eventually uncover. Can Tempe maintain a professional distance as the past catches up with her in this? Her most deeply personal case yet. For S, I picked Sylvia Day, Seven Years to Sin. Seven years ago, on the eve of her wedding, young lady Jessica Sheffield witnessed a scandalous seduction by the roguish Alistair Caulfield. But after years of serene but unfulfilling marriage, she still cannot free her dreams of this illicit liaison. So when a, widow, when a newly widowed Jessica steps aboard Caulfield's ship for a transatlantic passage, years of denied pleasure and passion will be unleashed in the most provocative way. And this is another smutty one. Another smutty one is Tea Tempted. This is by Megan Hart. I, have every, I had everything a woman could want. My husband James, the house on the lake, our perfect life, and then Alex came to visit. The first time I saw my husband's best friend, I didn't like him. Didn't like how his penetrating eyes followed me everywhere. Didn't like how James changed when he was around. But that didn't stop me from wanting him. It was meant to be fun. Something the three of us shared though, through those hot summer weeks Alex stayed with us. Nobody was supposed to fall in or out of love. After all, we had a perfect life. And I loved my husband. But I wasn't the only one. For you, for you... I picked When You Walked Back Into My Life. Did you see what I did there? And this is by Hilary Boyd. For eight years, Flora's love affair with Finn was a whirlwind of fun and spontaneity. But when Flora wanted to settle down and have children, Finn vanished. Life moved on and Flora's world filled with other people, other cares. There were benefits to being single. No socks under the bed, no mess in the bathroom, even if the memory of Finn could never be completely erased. But then suddenly, shockingly, Finn reappears. He's a changed man, he says, and he wants Flora back. Is this a chance to put right the wrongs or a massive mistake? For V, I picked another Kathy Reich's novel. This is Virals. Heart-stopping forensic action with a lethal twist. Tori Brennan is as fascinated by bones and dead bodies as her, fam as her famous aunt, forensic anthropologist Tempe Brennan. However, living on a secluded island off of Charleston in South Carolina, she does not have much opportunity to put her knowledge to the test, until she and her group of technophile friends stumble upon a shallow grave containing the remains of a girl who has been missing for over 30 years. With the cold case murder suddenly hot, Tori realises that they are involved in something fatally dangerous. On the run from forces they don't understand, she and her friends have only themselves to fall back on. It soon becomes clear that the island is home to a secret that has driven men to kill once and will drive them to kill again. And then W is Ben Galley the Written. His name is Farden. They whisper that he's dangerous. Dangerous is only the half of it. Something has gone missing from the libraries of Arfell. Something very old and something very powerful. Five scholars are now dead. The country is once again on the brink of war and the Magic Council is running out of time and options. Entangled in a web of lies and politics and dragged halfway across icy Imanska and back, Farden must unearth a secret even he doesn't want to know. A secret that will shake the foundations of his world. Dragons, drugs, magic, death and the deepest of betrayals await. Breathtakingly vast, chillingly dark, brooding and dangerous, the written will leave you impatiently waiting for the next adventure. Welcome to Imanska. So that's that one. For X, I was clever again. I picked Kathy Reich's Crossbones, because cross, 
X cross, yeah. Um, an orthodox Jew is found de shot dead in Montreal and the mutilated body barely recognizable. Extreme heat has accelerated decomposition and made it virtually impossible to determine the bullet trajectory. But at, just as forensic anthropologist Dr. Temperance Brennan is attempting to make sense of the fracture patterning, a mysterious stranger slips her a photograph of a skeleton, assuring her it holds the key to the victim's death. The trail of clues leads all the way to the Holy Land, where together with Detective Andrew Ryan, Tempe makes a startling discovery. But the further Tempe probes into the identity of the ancient skeleton, the more she seems to be putting herself in danger. For why? I was clever again, for a third time. I picked Remind Me Again Why I Need a Man by Claudia Carroll. Ever since she was a little girl, all Amelia Lockwood has ever wanted is to get married. The Tiffany ring, the Vera Wang dress, the whole shebang. Her glamorous television career, gorgeous flat and fabulous friends only go so far in consoling her now, that, uh, consoling her now that she's in her 30s and still not married. So when Amelia hears about a course that, she, that promises she'll be saying I do before the year is out, she jumps at the chance to enrol. What Amelia doesn't realise is that she will be instructed to revisit all her past relationships to work out where she went wrong. In single-minded pursuit of her ultimate goal, Amelia gets in touch with every ex-boyfriend she's ever had, right back to age 16, with some surprising results. And lastly, for Zed, I picked Alice Through the Zombie Glass. This is another Alice in Wonderland kind of spin-off. Um, and this is book two of the White Rabbit Chronicles. I've not read the first one, but I imagine you can pick one up whenever you, you know, it's the second. Uh, it, this is Alice Through the Looking Glass, so. Alice Bell has lost so much. Family, friends, a home. She thought she had nothing else to give. She was wrong. After a new zombie attack, her world gets even stranger. Mirrors come to life and she can hear the whispers of the dead. But the worst? A terrible darkness blooms inside her, urging her to do dangerously wicked deeds that are impossible to come back from. And that's the last one. So I've got some great, great books here. I'm really excited to delve into them. And it kind of makes me want to go and read now, to be honest. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Sorry it was a bit strange me just reading blurbs. As I said, this is the only one that I will probably ever do on this channel. It was just my way of joining in on a project while not actually joining in on a project. So... Thanks for watching. I will see you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye.